if you're not following me on Instagram, please do follow because we are uploading many behind the scene pictures and videos there. Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In the previous part, we talked about various causes of air pollution and one of the cause is smog. So let us first talk about this particular air pollutant. This smog is actually a combination of fog and smoke. And depending upon the composition, the smog can be divided into two categories or we can say that there are two different types of smogs that we normally talk of. The first is called photochemical smog. It is also known as LA type of smog. LA here is for Los Angeles because the area where this type of smog is very common, the name is given on the basis of that place. It is also known as brown air. So these are the different names or terms which are given to this type of smog. Now, when we talk about the composition, it has ozone, it has peroxyacyl nitrate, that is PAN, it has NO2 and hydrocarbons. So, if these four things are there in a smog, then that is LA type of smog. The second is known as London type of smog or it is also known as classical smog and the composition here it has suspended particulate matter and oxides of sulfur especially SO2. So the questions which are asked are on the basis of composition that if a smog contains oxides of sulfur, then it is which kind of smog? So here there are oxides of sulfur and in this type there are oxides of nitrogen. So these are the two types of smog. When we inhale this smog, all these substances get into our respiratory tract. They cause inflammation, irritation and damage to our alveoli. That means it is going to affect our respiratory system. So this is one part which we uh, partially did in the previous uh, video. Now if we talk about controlling the air pollution then there are various ways or methods depending upon what exactly is the main air pollutant. And when we were talking about the causes, we said there is one important uh, factor and one major pollutant which is suspended particulate matter. And if its size is very small, then it causes maximum damage. So here we will first talk about how to get rid of this particulate matter. And the device which is used is called electrostatic precipitator. Electrostatic precipitators are of various sizes but they work on same common principle and they are used to remove suspended particulate matter and they are also very effective they can remove about 99% of suspended particulate matter 
That means it is very effective. Now let us understand the basic principle and this is just a simple diagram, schematic diagram to understand how exactly it works. And as I said, its size would depend on from where is this suspended particulate matter coming. So from where is this SPM coming, suspended particulate matter? It comes from thermal power plants. Suspended particulate matter is also released from smelters. That means wherever in the factory something is being crushed, some fuel is being used, then those tiny particles are released in the air. So now if this is our electrostatic precipitator, then that polluted air is allowed to enter into this device. Polluted air is going in. And as we know that this is polluted with suspended particulate matter, we are just showing them with little dots. Inside the electrostatic precipitator, there are either wires or plates. So if these are the wires, then the wires are going to be like this. Suppose these are three different wires which are uh, supplied with high voltage electric current and through these the, part, the air is going to pass or they can be plates also. So it can be in the form of these plates. Suppose this is one plate, another plate and the air passes between these plates or through these plates. So these are the wires, electric wires, which generate a negative charge. Actually, they release electrons in the form of a corona. So here we would find a corona and that corona is of electrons. And now when this dust or the suspended particulate matter passes through these wires, they also get negatively charged. The net charge on these dust particles is also negative. And now these charged dust particles will be passed through the collection plates. These collection plates are grounded so that the negative charge, the electrons which are received by these plates would be passed on to the ground. So now when these particles, dust particles, they come here, they lose their charge and because the electrons are getting conducted to the ground and these dust particles will fall here. This dust can be collected later on and the air which escapes this electrostatic precipitator is clean air. Now as, we, uh, as I said that the size of this uh, electrostatic precipitator will depend on how big the thermal power plant is or the smelter is and the location would also be decided on the basis of the point from where this pollution is released. But it is a very very effective uh, method to remove or to get rid of suspended particulate matter. And these suspended particulate matter because they are so tiny that they remain suspended in the air. And that is why we are calling them suspended particulate matter. So if they remain suspended in the air, we are going to inhale them. And when they are inhaled, they again cause inflammation, damage in our respiratory tract, especially in the alveoli. So 
if we have to remove the air pollution from a thermal power plant or a smelter or similar kind of factories, then electrostatic precipitator is a very good effective device. This is one. Now in the next video, we'll talk about a couple of more devices which are used to control air pollution.